Right. Um, so now I also know you still stay uh, active with the NSCA quite a bit. You present uh, nationally and internationally. You talk to us a little bit about uh, what what your favorite topics are that you like to present on um, when you're when you're traveling. Oh, with man. The NSCA. Anything that anybody will listen to me about, really. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> Uh, you know, here actually people are still showing up. I hear it's, it's amazing. So I think they accidentally thought it was somebody else's lecture. But no, I mean, in, in a lot of cases, um, here recently, probably in the last four or five years or so, um, kind of taking a, a split in, in my career path. Um, so a lot of the training and research focus I have, it, the, the big umbrella is human performance, but mm -hmm. one is for athletics and the other is for more uh, tactical or law enforcement. Oh, nice. So recently, you know, I've been getting a lot of. Um, you know, invites to speak on things specifically for uh, law enforcement officers, so SWAT, uh, recruits, cadets, things of mm -hmm. that nature. Okay. So uh, that's been kind of an interesting area. Um, you know, yeah, talk to us a little bit about that, would Man, you? We, we've talked about it in the past a little bit, but, you know, if you look at um, a typical cadet class, um, there's some folks you'll go in there and go, okay, why didn't you sign a pro contract with somebody? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're jumping, you know, 30, 32 inches on, mm -hmm. on their verticals. And then you have others where you're pretty sure they walked into Walmart and said, would you like to be an officer? <laughs> um, it's just, it's all over the board. So I think that's one of the fun things is looking at, okay, occupationally, what do you have to do to be fit for duty? Right. And, you know, really trying to retro engineer this thing a little bit, you know, so basically what we do in strength conditioning, you know, where you go through your basic needs analysis, task uh, mm -hmm. evaluation, things of that nature. It's been done in law enforcement, but they haven't necessarily put hard numbers to um, you know, what fitness tests and assessments are going to predict your ability to do the job. Okay. And uh, the hard thing about that is, is like there's a huge um, issue that goes along with that related to um, you know uh, just the litigation issues and um, you know. Anytime you basically hinge a fitness test on somebody's job, so in other words, you have to do X or you don't get to keep your job, it gets real sticky. Oh, I bet. And uh, so right now, a lot of the line of research I'm looking at is trying to look at what are the physiological demands of different types of tasks, and then how can we um, use these fitness assessments over here to help best predict who's going to be successful at those tasks. Mm -hmm. So again, similar to what you do in athletics, mm -hmm. just in a different genre. So. Well, and that's become a, a hot area uh, for practitioners to get jobs out of school, is in the tactical sector. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity out there right now. So that's great that you're kind of, kind of maybe you know leading the path here and kind of looking at some of the research strategies and some of these strategies to uh, help make these in the line of duty. Um, practitioners, you know, healthier and more efficient at their job. Yeah, and, you know, and it's a really cool area because you know a lot of the things that we have to do on the, the field of athletics is really similar to what they have to do worst case scenario, right, in, in their daily job. So you know, again, it's one of those things where it's not necessarily a leap trying to transfer those different components over. It's just kind of framing them in a different way. So.